Hey traders, welcome back to Tiffany Trades Options. My name is Tiffany and I love to trade stock options. This is a follow on video for the video that I published on February 19th. If you go back and check that video, you'll see that I opened up a trade using a Tiblio recommendation, um, which is right here, this NVIDIA put credit spread. And then I also decided to show you how I just select um, regular uh, put credit spreads based on my own personal selections, which is this square put credit spread right here. So both of these put credit spreads are in the money. Um, I admittedly do not let my spreads get this close to expiration. I personally prefer to roll them out or manage them or close them when there's anywhere between seven to 10 days left. Um, I secretly was kind of hoping that this NVIDIA put spread would get assigned so that I could show you guys what happens if you are assigned on the short side of a put credit spread. But that didn't happen and I only have a couple days left until expiration and so I'm going to walk you through how to manage in the money put credit spreads. Um, there are a couple of things that you can do in this scenario. I'm gonna run through the three options um, for your consideration and I'm gonna then show you what I'm gonna decide to do with each of these, these positions. Um, so obviously the first thing that you can consider doing is you can just cut your losses and move on. Um, this happens, it's, it's perfectly normal to have a losing trade every now and then, it's a fact of life. One thing that I wanna say about that is don't overanalyze the why, to be honest. I mean, stocks are gonna have pullbacks, the markets are gonna have pullbacks. Sometimes your assessment of the direction that you think the stock is gonna go doesn't work out and that's totally fine and that happens. So in these, in these scenarios, you just cut the losses and then you just move on. And so if you recall, I opened this position in NVIDIA on February 19th. I initially collected $129.69 in credit. This is after the fees that were assessed. During the week or the two weeks that we had of that pullback, I actually tacked on a call credit spread to the position because I wanted to sort of lessen the pain, so to speak, because I wasn't sure at that time what I was going to do with the position. And so one way is that you can mitigate your losses is to add uh, call credit spreads to in the money put credit spreads. And what I did is I added a call credit spread at the March 19th expiration the short side was 555 and the long side was 560 and I collected $106 in credit initially. And then the week started to stabilize and things were starting to sort of calm down and I decided that it would probably be my best interest just to close it. And so I took it off a couple days later. So in total, I kept $61.42 in credit from the call credit spread. So the total position for this NVIDIA put credit spread right now, I've collected $191.11 in credit. Now, if I close this position today, and, and if you are a Tastyworks user, this is the web browser platform. If you wanna close a position, you simply select both legs. You don't have to select control, but um, like other platforms, which is um, sometimes a little confusing. So you just select both of these legs and then you have your options to close position, close at profit, roll position, or group positions. And so you simply wanna select close positions. So if I close this position today, I will be taking a $480 debit, you know, adding on uh, 29 cents in fees. So 480.29 minus $191.11 is a $289.18 loss. And that's not the end of the world. It's not, a, it's not a big deal to me to have to take a $300 loss. This sometimes happens. And, and this, is, um, this is one of the benefits and one of the reasons why I strongly advocate for put credit spreads is because you know ahead of time how much money is gonna be on the table. So initially my max loss was $370.31. And that's assuming that the put credit spread was going to close for exactly five dollars, and I um, didn't add on the on the call credit spread side. And so, when you when you think about the exposure at the beginning of a trade, you know my my max loss, my personal max loss would have been three hundred and seventy dollars and thirty one cents. Um, opening that call credit spread gave me a little bit of buffer room. Right now, the trade is waffling a little bit between four seventy and four eighty. Um, so I'm actually, if I close this now, I'm taking less of a hit than what my initial max loss would have been. I'm closing it for about 289 or so. Um, 
and that's that's not that's not a huge sum of money and that's not a big deal and, and that's the benefit of having put credit spreads is because you know ahead of time what your personal max loss is going to be um and so when sometimes these things go wrong that's sort of like just what happens so the option is to cut the losses and move on and that is something that i um thought about doing and the reason i thought about doing that is because the chart for nvidia it's not giving me a lot of confidence that nvidia is going to get back above 555 obviously before expiration so i need to do something about that but i'm also not sure of its long-term outlook because i sold the put credit spread here on february 19th and at the time it was at 607 and then we had our downturn for the few weeks and it got down to 462 so that's about 140 150 dollar difference in the stock price and now it's back to 527. Yesterday it was doing pretty well and I had some um, high hopes that maybe it would get there. But now I'm not sure. You know, I don't have the same sort of bullish outlook on NVIDIA that I do on Square. And so um, the strong leaning right now is just to cut my losses and move on. And I'll show you a larger. And this is why, you know, um, it has sort of its run up and then it kind of cools off a little bit. A little bit of run up, cool off, run up, cool off, and I, and I feel like that's kind of where it's going right now, and and I don't know necessarily if I want to stay in this trade much longer than I currently have. Um, so when you are an analyzing stocks, I mean, take a look at the charts, and it's you know technical analysis can be perceived in various ways, and and really I just sort of look at trends and, and see how the stock has been trending over time. That is a hundred and eighty day time period, and it seems pretty clear. I mean, NVIDIA is bullish, sort of, um, but it's not on the same playing field as Square, where it's literally just going up. You know, we have the up here, and then we had that recent downturn, and it's going up again. So, NVIDIA, probably going to cut my losses and move on, but I'm going to talk to you about the other option. One thing that you can do if you're confident that your put credit spread is going to recover, you can simply roll the position out as is. Um, doing this, though, will give you a debit, which I do not do. So it, I collected $129 for this put credit spread when I initially opened it, and rolling it out for a debit would actually cost me about as much as I collected, and that just doesn't seem reasonable. The only times that I have seen where you rolling it out as is that will collect credit is when the position is not in the money. But because this is an in the money position, you're not gonna be able to collect any credit by rolling it out as is. And I do not recommend rolling out put credit spreads for a debit. If I rolled it out as is, I would my max profit would only be like $75, even considering both of the, um, both the put credit spread credit and then the call credit spread credit that I collected. And so that is, Something that you can do, but I do not recommend doing that for a debit, and I'm not going to do that here. The third and final scenario that I do pretty regularly, and I'm going to do it on square in just a minute, is you can roll it down in strikes. So let's just say 540, and then you widen the position by $5 or if you wanted to just do buy $2.50, you can do that, but keeping in mind the um, credit or debit uh, scenario right here. So I'm gonna do a buy $5, and then you send it out in time. So you'll see that the credit collected for every expiration varies just a little bit. It seems like it's a better deal to roll it down out and in time by two weeks or so, you can collect about 130 in credit, but notice that these bids and these asks are pretty wide, so it's not certain that you're gonna collect this much money. The obvious con of this scenario is you are increasing your max potential loss. And you need to think about that if that is something that you are considering doing. Are you willing to put more capital on the table to preserve the trade? if you are confident that it's going to turn around. If it does not turn around, which has happened, then your max loss is greater. Do you want to do that? Do you want to use more buying power and increase your max loss potential? Or do you want to just cut your losses and move on? 
you could certainly try to collect a little bit more by moving it up in time. I'm sorry, moving it up in strikes, and that's something to consider. But the scenario there is trying to put yourself in a position where you're very confident that the, this is going to end up out of the money by the time it gets to April 1st. Rolling out down and widening the strikes is a, is something that I do do, and I do it pretty frequently, but I only do it on positions where I have like, you know, roughly 85, 90% certainty that the position's going to turn around. Going back to the chart, it looks like NVIDIA has sort of kind of found its place in maybe the 500 to 540 route. So I want to consider strikes that would get me out of the money by expiration, and I'd probably need to move down to maybe 5, 525 for my short side, 520 for my long side, or maybe 530 for my short side, 525 for my long side. But I'd even then, I'm not confident that NVIDIA is going to stay above those strikes by the time it gets to the next expiration, just based on how the stock has trended over the last couple of weeks. And so I am going to cut my losses here. It bothers me precisely 0% to take a loss on live video. I think that it's important for you guys to see that. I am going to... See, now it's at 491, so my loss is just a little bit greater, but that's totally fine too. Review and send. It says I'm going to take a $361 loss. It'll increase my buying power by $6.70. And that's it. That got filled immediately. And it actually filled at 464, which is really cool. So the fees for that are 30 cents. 464.30 minus 191.11 is a $273.19 loss. So all in, that is not a huge dent to the Tiffany Trades Options account. All right, so Square is the other position that I had open for this account that I also opened the same day that I opened the NVIDIA trade. The expiration it expires next week, next Friday, um, but because I'm here and I'm recording this for you, I'm going to demonstrate how I'm going to manage this particular trade as well. And this is a scenario where I am very confident that Square is going to continue its bullish trend. I have no problem in this particular position increasing my p exposure by increasing my buying power as well as my um, potential max loss. I am a big fan of Square. I think it's a great stock. I love trading options around it. And so for this particular position, I am going to roll it out. I'm going to roll it down and I'm going to widen the strikes to collect more credit. So to do that in Tastyworks, you select both legs. You select roll position. And then I'm going to push this out to 30 to 45 days away, which is consistent with how it would be if I opened a trade. So expirations are right here. You just push the plus sign for out in time. All right, so the furthest out it'll go is April 30th for 44 days. The next monthly expiration after that is June 18th, which is 93 days. That's a little bit too far outside of my uh, put credit spread selling window. And I'm going to roll it down. So if I rolled it out and just widened the strikes, I could collect a pretty decent amount of credit. But I also want to ensure that this position ends up out of the money by expiration. So I'm going to roll this down from the short side from 260 to 250. And then I'm going to increase the widths of the strikes to 240. So this is now a $10 wide put credit spread. I'm going to aim to collect about 150 145 in credit, which is close-ish to the one-third rank. This is 44 days away. It's going to reduce my buying power by an additional $354.60, and I'm hopefully going to collect $148 in credit. And that filled also right away. So now I have a new position in Square that is a $10 wide put credit spread. 
I've just collected $148 in additional credit. So the total additional credit for this trade is $145.40. So now for this put credit spread, I've collected $326.09. The position has been pushed out to 44 days, so ho hopefully between now and expiration, uh, Square will end up above the 250 short strike. I have faith that it will. Like I said, Square is a really great stock to trade around. It's got a very bullish a bull case. Okay, that's it for the video. This is um, the wrap up outro. Let me know if you have any questions about managing positions, uh, when to take losses if you need to, when to roll if you need to, rolling down out and widening, widening strikes, or rolling out for credit or debit. I'm happy to help, happy to answer questions where they arise. I will probably end up trading on um, this account a little bit in between now and the next video. So if you want to keep up with those trades and what I'm doing, the link to the trade journal is in the description of all of the videos on this channel. Um, I'm probably going to uh, start running the wheel on some low cost stocks, maybe go back to Bank of America, maybe go to something a little bit cheaper, keeping in mind that the amount of buying power that I'm currently using for the square trade is consuming $1,000 in buying power now. So I will, there'll be some activity on, on this account in between videos. If you want to check it out, just come check out these links. Thank you very much for being here. As always, I'm happy to help, happy to answer questions where they come up. So definitely leave a comment, send me an email, DM me on Instagram. Um, I am available and happy to help. All right. Thanks everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye.